Picking a CPU is an important choice not only for gamers, but also content creators and just heavy multitaskers in general. Most of us assume that the more expensive chips yield scaled improvements all around. For example, the i7-6900K at $1,000 US dollars must be at least twice as good as the i7-6700K, being that it's three times as expensive. But as we've discussed and proven here on the channel, it's not about core count, and it's really not about frequency either, as much as it is about program operations optimization. You'll see that in these benchmarks. So i5 versus i7 versus i7 versus Xeon versus i7. I know that really doesn't say much, but that's why I have the thumbnail to kind of clarify some things. In particular, we'll be comparing the i5-6600K, the i7-6700K, the i7-5820K, the Xeon E52630V4, and the i7-6900K. Each of these CPUs has either a different core count or hyper-threading disparity, along with a significant frequency disparity in the case of the Xeon. So we've got a little bit of everything in this video, which should give you a good idea of what's preferable, cores or clocks and whether or not these CPUs can handle extreme multitasking. And what do I mean by extreme multitasking? Well, how about having a 4K video file rendering in the background of each of these benchmarks for each of these CPUs? You'll see two sets of benchmarks, one set with the background rendering and one set without. This way, content creators and heavy multitaskers alike can get a feel for what kind of CPU they should be after. Here are the two platforms, here are the specs of each. Better pause because I'm about to move on. The only difference is the quad channel memory config for the X99 platform, an advantage we'd be stupid not to utilize, although it's not likely to change many of these results. First up, the benchmarks without the heavy background multitasking. Cinebench R15 is a raw CPU horsepower test that forces each thread to render small segments of a much larger image. Presumably the more cores, the better, but frequency also plays a role. More cores equals more tiles rendered simultaneously, but more powerful individual cores equals quicker tile rendering. Here the i7-6900K won handily over the 10-core Xeon thanks to its substantially higher clock speed, followed third by the 5820K at 1298. This certainly isn't a test that favors non-enthusiast platforms. The 67 and 6600K SKUs fall behind here, but does this translate across multiple benchmarks? 7-Zip seems to think so. Huge lead again for the 6900K, but it's what we should expect. It's an overclocked 8-core $1,000 chip. Whoop de doo But what about the 5820K? Something more in the ballpark of about 300 US dollars. Only a couple hundred points away from a processor with four extra cores and eight extra threads. The power of clocks, ladies and gentlemen. I must admit the 6700K also performed admirably here, although I cannot say the same for the 6600K. Geekbench tests multiple facets of a system and molds those results into two different scores. The 6700K undeniably has the strongest single core of any CPU currently available, and it's followed not far behind by the 6600K. Our 10-core Xeon suffered the most here and scored just 2512 no doubt thanks to its clock speed. But what about when it comes to rendering? This is something I was personally on the lookout for. I went through several CPUs trying to find the perfect one for Adobe Premiere Pro, and you kind of get a mixed bag here. These numbers are in seconds. Just divide by 60 for minutes. The best value in this case is a bit of a split between the 6700K and 5820K. Both can be purchased for around 300 US dollars. It sometimes fluctuates between that and about 360 bucks. So it just comes down to a matter of total platform cost, in which case the 6700K takes the cake. When it comes to multitasking, however, you may want to rethink that conclusion. We'll discuss it here shortly. The Xeon wasn't too bad considering its frequency, but considering its price, it's definitely a no-go. Adobe Premiere isn't a well-optimized platform, and the law of diminishing returns applies in this case to core count. Now check out the 6900K, only a 15% decrease in overall rendering time, even though its price tag is much higher. This goes back to what I said earlier, core count isn't always what you should be looking for. Lastly, Handbrake, which I found to utilize as many cores as you throw at it. The 6900K half the 6700K's time, good news considering the latter has half as many cores and an equivalent clock speed. The Xeon also picked up the slack. Despite packing half the overall frequency of its 8-core counterpart, it managed to convert the file in a respectable time, all the while maintaining much lower core temperatures. Now for the super stress test. The colored bars you're about to see represent the heavy multitasking workloads, in particular a 4K video file being rendered by Adobe Premiere Pro in the background. Here we go. Cinebench. Huge cuts. Get used to it, folks. It's everywhere. About 50% for everything except for the i5, which had trouble even loading the program. Nonetheless, it did finish, albeit with a score that could be beaten by a Q6600. 
7-zip wasn't as bad. Fair numbers across the board and even the i5 managed itself. Something I'm not seeing that I did expect, however, are marginal increases in multitasking scores as core count increases. I didn't expect the 6900K score to drop by the degree that it did, and the 6700K score didn't drop by as much as I thought that it would. Let's continue. Geekbench. Oh, Geekbench. The i5 just gave up here. It couldn't do it. The program wouldn't respond once the loading screen popped up, and then Adobe Premiere crashed. Thankfully, the others didn't have the same fate. The 6700K score dropped by about 40%, the 5820K's 30%, and the 6900K's 20%. The biggest cuts were felt by the Xeon, whose single core plummeted to a mere 1,275 points, putting it in line with processors from the early 2000s. Lastly, Handbrake, and again, another shock for the i5. It managed to open the program and execute the command, but take its sweet time doing so. Even the 6700K noticeably slowed up, just the overall operating system, something I can't say for the higher core variants. It's not necessarily a reason to opt for x99, but does show the advantages of CPUs containing more than four cores, regardless of clock speed. So here is what you just saw in a nutshell. First up, the i5-6600K is no good for anything we just simulated. The i7-6700K is probably the best bargain for anyone not concerned with background 4K rendering or anything of that sort. The 5820K is for the consumer interested in x99, but not interested in extreme CPU prices. The Xeon is, well, probably not for you, just a blanket statement there. And the 6900K is for those interested in ultra heavy workloads and users whose programs are optimized for all eight or 10 cores. Then and only then can a $1,000 price tag be justified. Purchasing a 6900K for Adobe Premiere editing and rendering makes zero sense according to the benchmarks we just saw. Same can be said for the 6600K, by the way. And using this particular Xeon for anything other than a virtual machine hub or server system is a bit crazy. Want my personal takeaway? You ready for this? The i7-6700K is the best CPU for 99% of you. It leaves the door open to content creation, streaming, and even light multitasking. It doesn't require an expensive motherboard, it doesn't require superb cooling, and it doesn't have the minor issues that I've noticed with my X99 systems, latency, and infrequent system stalls. For those with X99 systems, I imagine you feel some kind of way right now, but the facts speak for themselves. Unless you're running some serious background tasks, a 6700K is enough. SLI and Crossfire is a different story on that platform, but you can still manage to get by with eight lanes per card. If you can manage an X99 build for roughly the same price though, go ahead, be my guest. But I'm telling you right now, once I get my hands on a 6700K equivalent from KB Lake, probably the 7700K, I'll be saying goodbye to my X99 platform. The programs I use simply don't take advantage of extra cores, and games certainly prefer stronger single cores. If you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up, give it a thumbs down. If you do feel the complete opposite, or if you hate everything about life, be sure to click the subscribe button if you haven't already, and stay tuned for other good stuff. I'm gonna be a bit busy this week with exams, but I'll still push out a video or two, I expect, sometime maybe around Tuesday or Wednesday. This is Salazar Studio. Thanks for learning with us.